My name is Phoenix Rose. I go to Whitney High School, class of 2024, play football and basketball, uh, corner, majoring in corner, and then I play receiver also, and in basketball, I play point guard. Phoenix, I'm going to ask you, uh, some of the stuff that I watched you play last year, how do you feel like you can shut people down the best? Um, when it all comes down to it, I feel like technique can never, never fails. So just polishing up my technique, and I feel like if I could shut anybody down, it'd be you know, get my feet in the right place or because I have I have a pretty quick first step. So I got the line and press or something or something like that or breaking on a ball. I feel like I'm I could shut somebody down off of that or something like that. So what when you talk about that first step, because this is such a great one for uh, I mean, pro athletes, we've talked to specifically about the first step. In fact, Jonathan Ogden for the Baltimore Ravens took a friend of mine that played for the Ravens, and he took his entire line out, and they spent a half an hour just on the first step. Yeah. Is that something you really work on, is that you make that first step so unconscious that you don't have to even concern it, that your first step is so fast, but do you actually work and dive down into that first step? Yeah, so um, a lot of times, like, when I start my workouts on the field, that's what I usually start with so as a warm-up, like, getting that twitch, and, like, because at the line, you want to have, like, a quick twitch so you can – Move lateral, move lateral fast, and always key on that whenever I start any workout or anything on the field. And then let me ask about that because you're talking about workouts too. Mm -hmm. um, dedication, I think that's a big important thing that we need to talk about. You're going to go work out on your own, yeah. like you're doing it on your own. Um, everybody that we're interviewing that's in the top of their the, around here um, are out there working on their own. So what what got you into the drive of being able to work on your own? Is there um, something that was instilled into you young, or is it just the desire and the drive that you want to be the best? Well, uh, it's actually both. So my dad, uh, he's back there, but um, he always instilled in me, like, you know, just work hard and, um, you know, never give up on your dreams. Not at a very young age. I've always dreamed of um, being at the top or whatever that may be or something like that. And also, like, just the dedication, like, I see... Um, I see others around the area like like working working just as hard or even maybe even harder than me or and that also drives me too because I know that I just I just want to be ready whenever it comes like Friday nights it's a big game and I just don't want to get embarrassed and also I, I just like fell in love with the work too like I, I enjoy um, working out by myself or if it's with teammates or like any any setting, any anywhere, like I just love working, and um, that's what I feel like it maybe becoming like a technician because I always worked like certain techniques and stuff that I would work in game or something like that. So, well, you brought up something great, and I kind of want to talk about mindset there, mm -hmm. about working out alone, how you fell in love with it, going into your workouts. Where would you say your mindset starts to go? So, honestly, like, um, I just think of, like, all the times, like, where I have could have, like, done something better. Or, um, like, a lot of times for a workout, I'll watch film on, like, things I need to work on. And so my mind goes into, like, a, like a place where, okay, what do I need to do to get better at this or that? And I, I just don't really, like, go just to go, just to say I went, you know what I mean? And so I'm always looking, like, to see, like, what I could fix. Because, you know, you're not going to be perfect at everything, but you could sharpen it up, you know, as much as you can. So that's what I mainly focus on. What's your favorite moments where you're like, I'm in the zone and I own this kid? So um, it was Del Oro senior night last year, my sophomore year, and – um, I had a pretty good first half. I had a couple tackles. Um, the ball didn't really get thrown my way. And so after halftime, I was just like, like in another, in another place. And, um, I ended up getting, uh, the game winning interception or yeah, game winning interception. And, um, when that happened, it all just unraveled. And like, I never, I don't think I ever touched a place like that, like ever. So. That was like a really cool moment for me. Do you get that in basketball too? I'm starting to uh, starting to get it now. We just had like a little summer league thing, and we went to a bunch of places. We went to like St. Mary's, Irvine, 
And in St. Mary's, like, a lot of times the reason why, like, I'll get into that place or something like that is because I feel like I'm being doubted because, like, you know, like, you know how kids like to, like, talk a little, talk a little cash or whatever. And that just, like, it makes me, it just makes me so, like, so much more hungry for, for, like, the main goal or whatever. So, um, also in basketball, I'd say, yeah. So does the, like, in football or basketball, is there a point where the game just slows down? Uh, yeah, and that's, that also, that also comes with, um, like, training so much, I feel like, is whenever, like, you just work, you just work, like, those situations and you're, you put yourself in those situations, you slow the game down, and that's when it becomes, I wouldn't say easier, but I would just say, like, it, yeah, it slows down, that's a good way to put it, it slows down. And you could process things faster, and um, it all just comes at you better, and you, you you're prepared for it. So yeah. When was your realization that the game was slowing down, and you were getting quicker to make those adjustments? How long did that take you? And for that, how much more will it take for you to slow the game down even more? Mm-hmm. So I'd say uh, when I started realizing it was so. Um, you know, watching a lot of film and like I said, film study is a very big part of it because when you study your opponent and who you're going against and who who you'll be lining up against all game, um, you could pick up on habits and things like that. And so that could also slow it down instead of going out there, you know, ill prepared and not knowing who you're going against or what you're doing. And so, um, I would just say, yeah, just like film study is a really, really big part of it. And also, you know, even you're watching, even though you're watching someone else, you're also watching yourself because somebody else is watching what you did last week. And so just fixing that and picking up on that and knowing, okay, he's probably going to try to attack this. So let me work on this. And it's those type of situations that you got to put yourself in to slow the game down. So, yeah. What you are now, consider where you're going to be. So what are you patterning yourself behind? What kind of a player do you think you are? What kind of NFL pro player do you think that you're similar to? Mm -hmm. So um, I feel like I'm similar um, to a corner. He plays for the Carolina Panthers. His name is J.C. Horn, one of my favorite players that came out of the draft in the 2020. came from South Carolina. And with him, it's just like his mindset is second to none. His competitive nature is something that I really, really want to adapt and um, I feel like right now, like, just just off of that, like, just studying his game and what he has to, uh, like, offer, like, you could always take pieces from people who have done it before, people who are already there. And so, like, I know he, he used to study, um, like, Deion Sanders and guys like that, like, guys with a, a, um, an, amaz- an amazing competitive nature and... So that's just something I'm trying to work to. So, who are your mentors? Um, so I train with DB Select. I'd say um, Brandon Thompson, um, the DB trainer there, and another trainer, uh, Tom Downs, T Downs. Uh, really, really good mentors. Um, they took me kind of under their wing, and um, actually, like kind of after quarantine in 2020, eighth grade going into my freshman year. And they polished up a lot of my like my skills and everything. And they opened me up to, like, a whole new, like, because I was playing safety and, like, you know, when I was coming up in the, um, Pop, Pop Warner. Yeah. And I was playing safety, but they uh, had moved me to corner. They saw something in me. And um, it's just been it's just been up ever since, like, like the training. And they also... They um they focus on like mindset training. So we're in a gym like uh, this. Eth- it's called Ethos Gym in Sacramento, okay. and we just talk about having like a mindset and how to approach the game and how to slow things down in the game too. So and also I'd say my dad. Who's your favorite teacher and why? Favorite teacher. Okay, so ooh, that's a good question. All right. Yeah, I threw it. So, I threw it. Um, Look at the big one. smile. Yeah. Like, he actually got excited a little bit about it. Yeah, yeah, he's like, "Who do I say? I like all my teachers." Ah. So actually, so I, I like all my teachers. Glad you said that. But my favorite teacher is um, from Whitney is Miss Lum, and um, so 
we kind of uh, had something like, so before every game on Friday, um, I would get like subway from my dad. He would drop it off and um, I would walk to our classroom and um, we would talk about, we, we just like talk about things like before the game, like she would, she would ask me where my headspace is and if I'm all right and everything. And I feel like that goes a long way. Like, and it just, it just made me very, very comfortable like going into the game, like talking about it. And she would ask me a whole bunch of questions about who we're playing and everything. I really, really enjoy that. And it was really, it was really nice. Who challenged you the most and why is that important? Challenges me like how? Who is on you and make sure you are, it could be a teacher that's really hard, but you respect it. Mm-hmm. It could be your mom, your dad. It could be somebody, you yeah. do, so whoever it is, who is the one that could be a coach? It could be a player. I mean, I've heard people say it's a teammate. Yeah. Who challenged you the most, and why is that so important? Um, so my mom actually challenged me the most, I feel like, because, you know, she'll she'll keep it real with me. And, you know, if I didn't do so good on a on a play or, you know, she won't let me forget about that play. And she's, she's pretty big on um, taking care of my body, too, like eating right and, you know, getting ice and everything. And she's always telling me if, if I want to be this and that when I go to college and if I have dreams and aspirations of, you know, starting in college, then I better start doing this and that. And she's always giving me tips. She has, she always sends me like little Instagram reels of, of new stretches and, and tea and herbs and spices and all that. And, you know, I look at it and I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't say it's annoying, but it's kind of annoying, you know, but you know, I, I really do appreciate it. And she's just trying to help me and, and I really thank her for that. So she challenges me the most. What are your superstitions? Superstitions. Okay. Another <laughs> great question. So um, let's see. What do I always do? So I love this question. Oh, by the way. This is, I got to think about this. So I always have like times of when I do of when I do stuff. Like I always have to like, okay, so school get out at um, 240, right? So right after school. I have to make it by the car to my dad's car by at least two fifty. So that's ten minutes. If I don't get there, then I'm like, okay, you know, I don't know how things are gonna go. But I make it there in ten minutes, and then um, he also brings like some, say if I need like some gloves or a towel, he'll bring it to me or whatever. And I go in the locker room and I chill, and then I always have to get taped by like at least anytime like. Um, below 4.30, and, like, when I get taped, it's always, I always have to get taped by a specific person, too. And it's always the same way. It was um, Miss Jager, the uh, the athletic trainer there, and she had to, like, kind of take my wrist kind of different because mm-hmm. I had um, injured my wrist during the season. And um, I would always chill in there for a bit, and um, at Whitney, we have these things called early outs, mm-hmm. and it's, like, um, punt returner, kick returner, kicker, receivers and quarterback go out before everybody else. Yeah. And I always have to be somewhere near the front when I'm walking out. So that's always like a superstition. So, yeah. What's your favorite play moment? Could be basketball, football. What is that one play that you will remember for the rest of your life so far? All right. So I would say... Um, my freshman year against Oak Ridge, um, it was my, yeah, so I was on varsity and they were driving down the field and, uh, fourth quarter, we didn't end up winning the game, but still, this is one I'll never forget. Um, we're in cover three and I got my first, um, what's called high school interception and, um, what's called McNally, my coach, he like didn't stop talking about it the whole week. And it was just a really, really good experience, and I'll never, I'll never forget that anywhere I go. So, is the McNally into the stands jump the best thing to ever happen? Got to be the best thing to ever happen. I didn't like, so I think I was towards like the back um, of the line, you know, shaking hands, and I thought we were just gonna go take a knee, talk, you know, and get out of there. But um, he said, "Everybody, run to the student section now, go!" And then he started running. And then I thought he was just going to, you know, stay on the track, you know, just sing the fight song. He jumps up on, I, I, he jumps up on a thing and like on like the gate, you know what I mean? And that's like 
it's a pretty high gate. So yeah, he, he, he kind of got up there and um, what's it called? I thought, I thought he fell at first. Like I thought he was going to fall or something. So I was like, Oh my God. You know what I mean? Uh, but that, that was, that was a pretty, that was a pretty cool moment. I, I, don't, I don't ever get that. So that's a tradition yeah. that has to happen from now on because oh, for sure. that is the best after a game. When you just he just goes up into the stands of the student yeah. section and they sing the song and it's just awesome. Ten years after you're done in high school, I'm sitting there talking about past players at Whitney, which I do all the time. I got to watch Phoenix Rose play in high school. He was finish the sentence. Um, he was a good player. Uh, he was also a good leader. But um, the biggest thing about him, I'd I'd say is. You know, he, he's a good he's a good person off the field and he always cares about his people and he's always good to his people and he's looking to create for others. College is knocking on your door, everything. College says we have A major, B major, C major for you. What do you want to major in in college? Good question. So um, I'd say first, um, probably business and then um, the second B, uh, communications. My sister, she got her master's degree uh, from Sac, Sac State. Yeah, um, communications. And C, um, I'd say this might be a stretch, but kinesiology. Uh, we have a class there, and so I'm actually taking that my senior year, fill it out, see how it is, and if I like it, I'm probably gonna shoot for that. So you're graduating, walking across the stage. Doesn't even have to be sports. What's in your head? What's in my head? Probably that I won't see half of these people, more than half of these people for the rest of my life. So I gotta gotta say something to all of them or try to say something to all of them before I go. And also kind of like you're stepping into like a new, like a new chapter of a book, kind of. Like, you know, like high school, it goes by pretty fast, but like those are the times that you're gonna remember forever, I feel like. And, you know, it's like it's like closing like the last like the last page to like a really really good chapter opening up a a new one you know that you don't know anything about so how important is that to you as a player to understand how important it is to get plus reps in practice yeah so um i was told once that the only like the difference the only difference between um a great player and a good player's reps. And I just feel like, you know, when, like, it's just going, if, if you're going, like, think about it. Like, if you go 10 times and uh, rather than five times, like, you probably got better. Even, even if you lost 10 of those reps, you probably got better that day, to be honest, than if you won just the five reps. You know what I mean? And I feel like, in practice, that's the that's the best time to get it in before the game because nobody's nobody's out there writing it. You know, it's not going to be in a newspaper. It's not going to be on TV. So why not get it in now? So you know, come Friday, you're ready and you've seen it already, or you've already repped that, so you know it's going to happen.